in the secret place again and I've got Nuan again. I can't wait to read a little bit from The Way of the Heart, one of my favorite books. If you're one of my close friends, you know that because you got this for Christmas this past year. Um, I have a little bit to read uh, towards the end of this book. It's pretty marked up by now. And um, Nuan says this. He says, um, Charity, not silence, is the purpose of the spiritual life and of ministry. About this, all the desert fathers and mothers are unanimous. This brings me to the end of my reflection on silence. In our chatty world, in which the word has lost its power to communicate, silence helps us to keep our mind and our heart anchored in the future world and allows us to speak from there, a creative and a generative word to the present world. Thus, silence can also give us a concrete guidance in the practice of our ministry. Just a really short paragraph there today. Um, I always feel like I have to qualify when I talk about silence a little bit because um, we really do need to speak too, and we were made to speak, and we were created with this great gift of voice and of, and of speech. But I think he's talking about the shallow words, uh, words that are, oh, I didn't read this part. Too often our words are superfluous, inauthentic, and shallow. It's a good discipline to wonder in each new situation if people wouldn't be better served by our silence than our words. You know, that that's kind of like become my rule of thumb. I usually have a lot to say. <laughs> I bet you guessed that's true. Um, but many times I just remain silent, not because I'm brooding, not just because I think, Mm, is it time to say something right now or should I continue to just listen? Because um, well, sometimes our words will not be received, so why just speak them and, and make them empty words? But too often it's true, I think our words are superfluous and inauthentic. And if you've ever felt yourself like, almost like hearing yourself speak and, and your own words feel like, um, like, like straw in your mouth, your own words feel like uh, they're they're just inauthentic or they're just shallow they're not rich they're not deep they're just flippant um, uh, if you find yourself in that kind of a situation or in that kind of a, a cycle in that kind of a period in your life uh, you know what it's just it's a good idea to take a trip in kind of go under the water submerge go and take a trip in and be quiet for a while See what you can learn in the silence. And out of that silence comes these, can come, the, these creative, generative words that really are powerful again, that really pack a powerful punch um, in a good way, um, not in a violent way. Um, we need to learn when to speak and when to be silent. And I'm not going to kid you. I don't think, I don't think it's easy. Uh, to figure out all the time when you know when is when we should be silent and when we should speak, but there you go. There, that's where we have that's the rub with why we have what we call a walk with God instead of just religion where we check off a number of things that we do so that we make sure that we are, we're we're all right in God's sight. We're doing well in God's sight. No, we have a walk with God. That's why I I always refer to it as a walk with God. Not usually, I don't always talk about it as a journey. It is a journey, but it's a walk with him where we are walking side by side, shoulder to shoulder, uh, if you will, spirit to spirit, heart to heart with the living, the living God who made us. And he's invisible. And if we don't have a reason to go seek him out, well, so, uh, we, we hardly know his presence is there. We don't. We can't even understand his presence. So we have opportunities when we find ourselves in those places where we're churning, or our words seem shallow, or they seem inauthentic, or disingenuous. That we can run back and uh, get refreshed, and get get refreshed in the silence, get refreshed in the quiet, and learn through attentive silence to to incline our ear. To what the spirit might be saying, the spirit might be saying through through just a, a, a sensing a motivation in our heart to get up and do something, get up and take a run, get up and give something to someone, bake something someone for someone, cook something for someone, go and do something good. 
make a call, a phone call on behalf of someone else, else to help them. Just be a listening ear. I don't know what the Holy Spirit is going to show you and tell you on any given day. Um, and, and maybe it'll come out of a still small voice. Maybe it'll, it's probably more likely that it'll come out of just an inner motivation where you feel an impulse to move and do. But, but it comes from that silence, that, that silence, what Nuan calls the silence of God, the silence of God. And unless we're seeking him, and we're practiced in that silence, and we learn to be okay by spending fewer words and just sinking into that silence of God. Unless we learn that, that silence, unless we learn that and we, we practice that discipline, as Nuan says, sometimes the silence of God just can, it can feel awkward and um, non-supportive, and and it can feel worthless, like it's um. It's, it's not real. It's deafening. It's um, like God is absent. He certainly is not absent. He's present. He's here. He's with us. It's for us, though, to go and seek him. It's for us to go and seek his face, to cry out to him. We need a little bit of silence for that. If the music is always playing, it's not likely that we'll hear God. The silence that I'm speaking of that Nawan talks about in this beautiful little book, The Way of the Heart, is a generative silence. It's a creative silence. It's a similar kind of silence from which the earth was made when the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And he said, let there be. Let there be. He separated the firmament from light and dark and said, let there be. Let there be light. And then he created us. That was an awful, awfully big creative silence, wouldn't you say? There was, before the Lord created us, there was, there was chaos. And nothing that was, was what? Nothing that was, nothing that was. There was nothing. And um, yet the creative spirit of God populated the earth and created the earth and gave us the opportunity to, to replenish and populate and reproduce. Um, he, he wants to give us that similar generative uh, creative way today. And it will come out of the silence in this noisy, noisy, distracted, and distractible world. I'm speaking to myself when I say that, and I'm speaking to you. I hope you've had a good time coming to see me today in The Secret Place. I'm always happy when you do, and when you leave a message especially. Um, I'm thinking of you also in between these messages. I pray for you, those of you that have specifically come out and said, I'm listening, I'm here. I pray for listeners in general. I think of you, and I know the Lord thinks of you too. So I bid you adieu today and look forward to seeing you next time. I hope you leave a comment. In the meantime, peace and to every good. Bye now. Bye.